I hope you're well. So there's lots of ways of making drawers. I've talked about many of them recently, certainly over the last six months or so. But in this video, I just thought I'd talk about uh, a quick overview of the pros and cons of each of these approaches from a simple box with no hardware to a full on undermount slide with built in soft clothes. Before we get to that, I just want to talk a little bit about draw construction because drawers are where consistency and accuracy comes together. I've said before many times that I value consistency above all else. So if you're making, say, a 600 mil tall cabinet, then most of the time it won't really matter if it ends up at 598 or 601 as long as you're consistent, as long as both sides are the same or all cabinets are the same if you're making a run. With drawers though, that will matter. It is important that the drawer fits snugly inside the cabinet within the tolerances that are allowed. It will matter that the drawer base is square, that the sides are parallel and that the front and that the front is perpendicular because you don't want a drawer going in like a dovetail and getting jammed halfway. Now drawers aren't difficult but you must get those fundamentals of square and straight and true absolutely right because if you don't then you're going to be making life difficult for yourself. The construction of all these drawers is similar with the back sitting between the sides. The base usually set into a rebate or groove and the fascia fixed directly to the front edge of the sides. How that's attached exactly will depend on the type of drawer and I go into some of the options for these particular drawers in the dedicated videos on the side mounted and under mount runners. Let's start though by taking a look at the simplest drawer of all, a straightforward box. It's the easiest to make and the cheapest. There's no additional hardware needed because there are no runners and no special equipment required either. Most of the drawers in the workshop are this style and I've covered each of those builds in separate videos and the vast majority of them were either made or could have been made with just a track saw. Most of them were simply glued and nailed together and some of them are just glued. The big advantage of these in a workshop is that they're easy to remove and refit. There's no need to scrabble around in the back of a drawer when you can just pull out the entire drawer and replace it just as easily. The downside of this is that the drawer base rests directly on the cabinet internals so even if you're using thin strips of plywood for support as I am here then the weight of the drawer and its contents will affect how smoothly it runs and of course with no hardware you don't have the niceties like soft clothes. For an inset drawer like these I'd always recommend rebating the fascia so that it can be fixed into the rebate through the sides whether that's with nails like this or dowels or dominoes or just glue that rebate gives plenty of gluing area to get a solid bond. Getting a little fancier next with these DIY side runners. Uh, again, no commercial hardware needed. These were made from six mil or quarter inch plywood without even using a tape measure or ruler. You just need to take a little care with the actual construction. If you're making draw slides from solid timber, then a router in a table is the best way to cut the housing from the runner. But if you're happy with sheet materials, then plywood, like I used here, just strips of six mil birch to create the housing works very well. And this can be simply glued on. Like the previous basic box drawers, the big benefit of these is that they're easy to remove and refit. But unlike the simple boxes, the weight of the drawer and contents is concentrated on the much thinner side runners, which means that there's a lot less friction, especially with a well waxed runner and drawer like this one, it will run very smoothly indeed. Again, the construction is very similar with the back glued to the base, the sides glued to the back and the rebated front simply glued on too. Next up we're using commercial hardware and these runners are often called side mounted or ball race runners or slides. If you're fitting hardware I'd always recommend getting double extension or full extension slides as this lets the whole of the drawer contents be seen. These are by far the easiest of the drawer slides to fit as they simply screw onto the cabinet and the drawer side. You can fit them at whatever height you like, just bear in mind that they are visible when you open the drawer and you do need to account for the thickness of the slide, typically a half inch or a little under 13 millimeters when fitted. I rebated these into the drawer sides to reduce that a little and it also provides a firm stop that I could reference from for the height. The only adjustment available in these is in and out and up and down using fixings through the slots in the runner. And while there are tabs in the runner sides that can be bent slightly to take up any slack, it's generally better to try and get the drawers to fit without needing those if you can. 
the runners are a little bit of a fiddle to remove. The slides aren't handed. So these little clips that allow you to detach the drill box, one of them has to move up and the other one has to move down to get the drawer to disengage. And once the drawer is removed, the remaining runners stay in the carcass, sticking out by an inch or so, which can be a little bit awkward. You can get them all the way back if you needed to move the cabinet, for example, but then you have to manually disengage them to refit the drawers. These are the most economical way of getting a soft close option though. And while the action isn't always the smoothest, it's generally perfectly acceptable given the overall price of the hardware. Though this style of slide does seem much more sensitive with slight variations, height, squareness, whatever, affecting how well that soft close action actually works and how smoothly the draw runs. And it's that reason more than anything that makes me regard these as more of a workshop runner rather than something for domestic furniture. And finally, let's quickly look at the undermount or concealed slides. They are the most costly and they can be the most fiddly, but they are the smoothest draw and soft close action by far with the most adjustment available too, and they are essentially invisible in use. I used these most recently as the last drawers in the workshop cabinet build, and they went in without any real issues at all. You do get a slightly bewildering set of plans and specifications with these slides, as well as some slightly arcane restrictions that seem to relate to their country of origin as much as anything. And the method of fitting the draw box to the slides can seem like one long sales opportunity for shifting jigs, templates, and proprietary drill and driver bits, but the truth is that you can go off-piste with your dimensions and a little careful measuring and marking will see you through just fine. Of course, if you're doing commercial work for clients who may in future want to claim on a warranty that the hardware manufacturers like Bloom provide, then you must comply with their standards and specs. But for doing domestic work in your own home though, they're really very straightforward to fit with plenty of opportunity for in-out up, down, and side to side adjustment if you need it, and lots of information and online guides available too. Back when I was doing commercial work for clients, the Bloom Movento were my preference for all of the above reasons uh, quality, durability, availability, adjustment, support, and yes, the lifetime warranty didn't exactly hurt as a selling point either. But now I'm just doing work for myself and finding that these basic undermount runners that I can get off Amazon for less than half the price work just fine. The drawers are quick and easy to remove, the clips unlocking from the slides, and the slides just sit back into the carcass so it can be easily moved or transported. And the drawers will click back into place without any fuss or bother. So if you're looking for a good quality concealed runner for your domestic furniture and home projects, then these ones certainly tick all the boxes and won't break the bank. So there you go, four basic draw types with different approaches to runners and slides and all available at very different price points and for different use cases. They all have their pros and cons, of course, but they all work really well. So whatever type of draw you're planning, whether that's commercial work for clients or just domestic work, if you're in your own home, then I'm sure one of these options would be a great fit. I'm gonna call this one down for now though. Thanks so much for taking a look. I'll see you again very soon. All right, take care.